Hey Breakers, I'm Laerte from Break Me Down and welcome back to our channel. Today you will assist to the replica of the chat we had with Anita Chioda, a talented Italian singer who lives in London. I don't want to anticipate too much, but I believe you will enjoy the interview because we had dealt with very interesting topics, especially for those who want to move to London to pursue their dream. Remember to like the video, click to subscribe and activate the notification bell. Ready? Let's start! Yeah. Ciao! Ciao Anita! <laughs> ok, nice, bene, nice to meet you! Nice to meet you too! Hello. This, this, this evening will be a little bit different chat because we speak in English and uh, you know, sounds, as I said before, this could be uh, very weird because we are we are italian we both are italian so <laughs> it's, it's funny i know uh, <laughs> okay but um i just said something about you but you can say maybe something about uh your your story uh when did you start to play for example um well i started playing piano when i was like little super little mm -hmm. but I've been singing for my entire life. My mom says that I was the loudest one in the room since I was born. <laughs> like, yeah, but probably when I was 11 and then I started taking classes when I got older. But, um, but yeah, I started at like an early age. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you study here in Italy? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Sorry. In, in Milan. I yeah. read, read about your bio that you uh, started to the CPM. CPM. Yeah, yeah. That's when I started to take like a to go to an actual school because i used to do like private classes before um outside milan like in the countryside and mm -hmm. then wanted to get like a i just wanted to get a like a, a paper you know like to officialize you know, <laughs> my studies things that i i don't have <laughs> what a, a thing that i don't have yeah but you know you don't know, to be honest like i don't think you need it, like Mm. And it's a bit controversial, but I think that if you just want to do music and stuff, just just keep going. And then if you have the chance to study, that's an extra one. But you know, you can still make it even if you don't have like a paper. Yeah, gonna make life a bit harder, but it's okay. It's not. It's not essential. No, um, no. I'm okay, I I can live without it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> perfect. Now we said you are amazing. Um, musician and singer but uh, which are the, your biggest influences um well it's so many i think the biggest biggest one biggest biggest i biggest. think it's mike Patton, my faith okay. more the most important yes because okay. mike Patton can like he does whatever he likes and for me <laughs> like it's like a, you know something to look up to all the time like you have no limit and uh, you can experiment you don't need to stick to a genre i don't like to stick to a genre for example so mm -hmm. i would say mike Patton, and then i would say freddie mercury you know mm. yeah a, a little bit <laughs> I up with listening to queen so and freddie was just so special and and pretty everything he did was just so pretty and not pretty is not the perfect word but it's just beautiful whatever he does so I would say that, yes. But Mike Patton live, lives in Italy. Not anymore. I think he lives in San Francisco now. But he is, well, yeah, he used to be married. Uh, his partner is still like the Italian woman that he married like years and years ago. I saw him in Italy, actually. I actually met him and he was my phone. Where, 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 where? I want to know Modena, this. In Modena three years ago. Mm -hmm. He was in a, show in a theater with a pianist. So it was just like piano and, and him vocals. Mm -hmm. and they were playing, you know, Mr. Bongo and some acoustic songs. They played Slayer, you know, piano and boy. <laughs> like, <laughs> I never, I never heard that Slayer piano and vocals. Uh, I, I think sounds a little bit, a little bit odd. <laughs> really odd. This is why I like. It, you know? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you said, so, sorry. I said I saw him like um, I went with my mom. And we were outside the, the theater. We were like trying to collect the tickets. And then we were like behind the theater. And I see these three people speaking like with a very strong American accent. And I'm like, wait a minute. I think this just might be right. 
<laughs> I had to do it, you know, like I, I just went for it. <laughs> Yeah, it's like with me, uh, like for me, when uh, I was in Bologna, because I think he, he, li he lives it, no, he, he lived in Bologna, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I was in Bologna, I had, I had uh, maybe the same, um, same situation, but with another, with another guitar player famous, uh, her name is Jennifer Button. And okay. I, I went there to see some concert and uh, the main stage, as I, I think the, the headliner was uh, Ingrid Malmsteen. And before him, there was Jennifer Button. And after the show, we went to a bar to take a coffee, just a beer or something like that. And a friend of mine said to me, oh, look, look, look that woman right there. It looked like Jennifer Button. I just turned back and I said, no, man, that's Jennifer Button. <laughs> <laughs> what did you no, I, I was so uh, shy right there. And I went there, I said, oh, n nice to meet you. Can I offer a, a coffee? <laughs> Can I pay you a coffee? <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing because, you know, uh, for me, it, it's, it's like um, uh, Edward Van Allen uh, for a female Edward Van Allen like that or Steve Vai, uh, the guitar, but female. Uh, it, was, it was amazing for me. And I, I, I think you, I think I know what you uh, felt like. Um, yeah, I can feel it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I had Maybe. like a, a similar experience, but like uh, when I went to Los Angeles like uh, two years ago, on my first day there, I go to a diner like to have breakfast. I, I was, it was literally the first morning I was there. And then like 10 minutes later, I see this woman sitting at the bar. She's not my biggest, like, I'm not the biggest fan, but I really like her. And I'm like, wait a minute. And then it was fucking Brody Dolle from the distillers. Oh, wow. <laughs> it was like profile and she had her piercing on the other side. So, mm -hmm. and I could see it and I was like, is it her? And then she turned and I was like, oh my God, that's really her. But I didn't go and say anything because I was <laughs> starstruck, you know? Like you don't want to, and yeah. so you yeah. just don't you're just happy like that and that, that's that's enough you know yeah yeah i know in that moment you don't know if it's right or wrong you want to do that but you maybe if you just stop it because no 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 maybe yeah. it's better it's better if i stay right here yeah. <laughs> like i saw that like she, you know she's from there and i thought she probably comes here every morning and she has a routine so i don't want to break her you know, comfort zone of like this is my place you know i don't want to yeah. go go there and like, ah, you know? so I respect myself. <laughs> because maybe sometimes they, they are very bored, boring about this kind of guy that comes to, okay, can you sign me this? Or can I take a picture with you? Don't, <laughs> don't do that. And you said before that you don't have a genre, but um, which is the one that you love the most? I would say, let's just say rock, because okay. we includes everything, you know? There's you like say, you say all, but you say nothing. Exactly. <laughs> uh, let's just say I, I go for phases, you know. So there's months where I just would stick to a genre and just listen to that, mm -hmm. or I don't know. I really like. I always like like pop punk. Like it's been a constant thing for me for the last four years. Um, experimental, any genre or experimental, every type of experimental. Um, metal. But even that, metal doesn't really mean anything, does it? Mm. No, I don't think. <laughs> so, um, I really like Afton's, Mr. Bungo. Ah, okay. Uh, Guns N' Roses as well. Like, I'm a big fan of Guns N' Roses. Like, no shame. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's it. But it, it really depends on uh, what music I'm making or what mood I am into, you know? So, like in the lockdown, for example, I just wanted to feel happy. So I was listening to just a lot of happy pop punk all the time. It's very emo, but it's kind of like two, I don't know, two sides of yourself that you want to express. Like you're sad, but you're also, you want to be happy because you want this to be over, you know? Sure. So, so I'd say that, yeah. Sure, sure, okay. So it depends uh, on the period that you are looking into. And uh, uh, for me, during the lockdown, I wrote a lot of stuff, but uh, not rock. Maybe uh, I think um, more 
more death metal or something like that. Not 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 yeah. for my band, yeah. just for me. <laughs> because you know, uh this is very heavy um to uh to bear. It's it's very complicated and uh, we can do uh this kind of stuff because we can play. I don't know how is the situation right there uh for uh, gigs or something like that. Um but I want to ask you before this, before going into this specific uh, time, uh, I want to know why you move from London, uh, from uh, sorry, from Milan to London. How did uh, you, how long did you live there? It's been nearly six years now. Six years, okay. Oh, that's been a while. Um, well, first I just needed to like I, I always dreamed of living somewhere I could speak English all the time. Because I <laughs> first, and then I just want you know when you just want to. You you can always do your thing everywhere you are, but sometimes you need an extra input. You need to be out of your comfort zone. You need to be lost in a way. Even if London is quite close to home, it's not like going to in America to America, you know. But um, I think I just wanted to get away and like just challenge myself. I didn't know anybody when I got here. I knew a girl. And um, I was like staying in her place as she was moving out, but I never met her before. She was a friend of a friend, and then I was alone, like literally. So I think it was like more of a challenge, putting myself out of the comfort zone, kind of thing. So, okay, yeah. and why? Why London? Why this city and not maybe I don't know uh, Manchester or uh, I don't know uh, Liverpool or maybe a little bit far away. Uh, you prefer England, England or uh, America? Mm -hmm. I think that in Italy we have an idea of London, but actually America is that idea. London ah, is okay. London is London, but we don't know because you know you come here, you see everybody's moving out, every everybody's making a lot of money doing this and that, but it's hard here, you know. It's, it's yeah, I know, I know. I have a, I have a lot of friends that that, li that are living there, and it's it's a very complicated situation right there, I think. But I, I, I admire you for uh, for doing this stuff because for me, it's, it's one of my dreams to go outside Italy, living in places like London. I was been there about four times and I loved so much. But I think that as a tourist, it's completely different. It is. It really it's is. Like <clears throat> when you move here, unless you have a lot of money and you can live in a nice area, London is not what you see in movies. Like it's not. It's like shit. Um, how do you say? Borough, you know, quartiere, mm -hmm. and these are like case comunali, come cavolo si dice, like about. <laughs> uh, it's really expensive still, and you. Mm -hmm. It's like a lot of money for like a piece of, like a really small room. Um, but I think I I chose London because. In my opinion, at the time, all the opportunities were here. So I wanted to be where the big movement was, the whatever movement means. Like everybody was here. It was buzzing. And mm. lots of things were happening, like different genres, different um, situation, people. Uh, it's multicultural here, obviously, like so many people from everywhere. Lots of Italians, too. As well, like plenty of Italians. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. No, you know. It's, it's like you know you said uh, uh, this is uh, the idea is america but you you went there to london because i think london is the first step when you want to go out you want to speak english you want to learn english you want to try something uh comfortable because it's not so far away it's just oh. one hour flight and hey, insurance but well, if you go to the states you need to have an insurance because even if you get a cold or something, it's so expensive to like get medicines and stuff. While here, the the health um, the health system is public. So I, I mean, I didn't think about it at the time. That was my last problem, you know. But when mm -hmm. I went to the US, I two years ago, I was like, I was aware, and that's also a big difference, you know, because mm, America is bigger and it's much scarier than London. Like so much scared. Los Angeles, especially for me, it's so big and nobody walks uh, unless you're 
uh, you know, you're alone with the homeless people. <laughs> with the where, where have you been there recently? Uh, I've been there for like a month in October 2019. Mm -hmm. And well, I had some stuff planned uh, when I was there. Um, I ended up like in a couple of recording studios and stuff, but mainly it was like a personal journey. Just like go there and like be by myself. I didn't know anybody. I had, I had some people like, but I was not relying on meeting them, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm, it's it's good when you go there and you're open to things to happen, you know. Like yeah. You go there and um, it's just, oh, to a fucking what is it called? Um, in and out burger. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like photographers and musicians, and then you know you just start you start chatting with everybody, and then you make friends like that, and you know come here, go there, let's try this. London is more shy. People are much shyer. If you open up to them, they say yes, but it's hard for like people mm. from here to do like a first step, you know? But if, because they are English or... That, oh, sounds, <laughs> sorry, it sorry? Sounds a bit racist if they say it like that, but it's more like a culture thing, you know? They're very respectful and they're very respectful of if, you, if you're out alone, maybe you just want to stay alone. You know? <laughs> okay, okay. Um, but then when you are open to them, they're like, oh, okay, like, you know, like it's easy to make friends. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Just the first step is, is a very hard to approach. I, I was honestly, I had a different experience. Like I always had people approaching me, but then I have to be aware that, you know, it's not the same for everybody. Uh, yeah. Exactly. They were more like that. Yeah. Um, there is a question for you. In your opinion, what is the emerging music capital of Europe, London or uh, Berlin? Well, I don't know much about Berlin. I know some artists from Berlin, they come to London to make it, you know? Really? I, yeah. <laughs> also with the Brexit? Well, the thing is that if you are from, if you are from Europe and you come here, and you manage to like apply, and you apply to stay and it works it goes through like it happened with me for example we technically if we are european and we live in london we have no problem in touring because the problem is for british people they can't yeah. go to, but we can go back and forth you know oh. so that's good for us because we have a permit to stay but also we are from europe so we can we can go around it's it's a very complicated it was complicated like um when brexit start before brexit like happened officially everybody from abroad uh in from europe we had to apply for um a settlement scheme or pre-settlement scheme mm -hmm. just had to you know pray for the better but they, they accepted <laughs> pray yeah. for the better <laughs> i mean you had, if you've been living here for more than five years, it's easier. They're gonna let you stay, and they could refuse someone else. I, it's really uh, all of my friends, everybody I know, like they got it fine. So nobody was refused. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Sacrament uh, asked, uh, "What uh, What are your favorite things about London?" Hmm. Uh, about music or in general? I think in general. After I ask you about music. <laughs> the best things I think the best things your, your, are, no no the, not the best the favorite your favorite I, okay I love the architecture here I think all the houses here are so pretty even if they all look the same they're really I, I really like them like even the, a, but, I, but they are so small how you how you can say pretty but small yeah so I just like them from the outside inside <laughs> Uh, okay okay <laughs> i like i don't even know what i like anymore about london i've been here for so long uh well things here work they are very like, you know in italy it's always chaos if there is a strike on a shop at all chaos uh people don't want to queue in italy people don't want to respect the rules in italy and bureaucracy if you want to i don't know move somewhere open a bank account it's like a big deal here it's just like you have to do certain steps and then it's done so it's they're clean you know it's they don't make 
extra problems. Let, let's just say it like, like that way. Let's go back a little bit to uh, your Italian life um, before your British life. I read, I read in your bio that you had several cover bands here in Milan. Which music, which music did you play with them? I think the first time I was playing like some rock covers on keyboards uh, when I was 16. So ACDC and Velvet Revolver against the world, you know, the usual stuff that goes into, you know. And then I had another band. We used to play like sort of progressive rock metal. Mm -hmm. So they Muse, um, Deep Purple, uh, Porcupine Tree. Um, wow, wow. So it was more focused on the single, sp single tracks instead of just, um, just a genre, like to a band, you know. And then I also used to play um, like some jazz and blues with some friends, like acoustic duos and stuff. And then I used to play, I used to guest for uh, an, an like, I Irish punk folk band as well. Mm-hmm. That you probably know, like with Andrea Rocco and uh, like Balkan Desiders and stuff. Like I played some shows with them, like in the past, like before London. Yeah, was... yeah. we had Andrea in this, um, in oh, this really? live stream. Yeah, yeah, a few months I, ago. Post yesterday, so I was like, oh my god, I have to say that. <laughs> he wrote to me also. And <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, I want to know also, um, which are the differences between play in London and play in Italy, musically speaking. So I think the main were the main ones are two. In Italy, a lot of people play covers. Here, mm -hmm. no, no, like they do. You go to a pub and someone's playing covers in the background. But when you go to an actual show in a bar, you know, like a, a pub that also has a stage, it's always like um, like original bands most of the time, like most of the time, and the. One, mm, I think the the audience here, they just want to have fun. Like sometimes they don't care how good the band is. They don't point fingers. They are not bitching and stuff. It's just like, oh wow, yes, you know. They're just like they hype you so much as you're performing that you just you know you do your best. You end up doing your best because you get the energy from the audience. It's so good. It's you a party. It's a party. I, I was I I played right there in Camden uh, I, uh, for so many years ago. I think it was the two thousand and twelve, maybe two thousand and twelve, uh, and I played in. Uh, sorry, I don't remember right the name of the venue. And uh, the Dublin Castle. Yeah, it's not far from where yeah, I live in Camden, so Ah, you live in Camden, ah, I didn't ask you before. I wanna know that. So uh I live at um, I went there with uh, with a band Italian band. We okay. we sing we sing we sang in Italian, so it was a, a, a very, very strange thing for us. Um came there and make a show in entirely in, in, in Italian and we had wow. an audience and it was amazing. <laughs> it was a Tuesday. I, I always remember this. It was Tuesday, and I think the the, the the venue was not so beautiful. I mean, I smell a little bit, but it was uh, amazing. <laughs> was, yeah. was was amazing for me because it was the, my first experience in England and uh, in London. Also, I always want to play in uh, in London. I play the three times. Um, Always one, there? Uh, no, two, two in Dublin Castle, the first time that I went there, and the second time, uh, always in the Dublin Castle and in the White Chapel, but I don't remember uh, the name of the venue, it was upstairs. Uh, I don't know any places there, so um, I will not be of any help. I don't know the places there. You uh, started to play in... Uh, in a particular way, I mean, uh, you went to a jam session right there. Yes. And how, how it started? So, um, 
consider this. When I moved to London, I just wanted to stay three months as everybody. Okay, so I didn't have a, like a long-term plan. I was like, I'm gonna come here, do whatever I can, and then, you know. So I used to live near Whitechapel, actually. And I used to come to Camden every Monday because they used to have this gym session in the market, in Camden Market. And on my third night here, uh, they were hosting the gym sessions there. And I just jumped on stage. It's just so easy there, you know? You just, they have this band and they all, they all know a bunch of different songs. And then you go there and ask, okay, do you know how to play this? Or they ask you, uh, no, we don't, but do you, can you play something else? And then you kind of work it out. And if you can't play anything, you just start playing like, you know, they play like a, a blues round, Giro de Blues, like a round blues. And you just like improvise on that. <laughs> That's yeah. funny. That's funny. It's, it's impossible to do it here. I mean, <laughs> I know everything has to be prepared because I, I don't know why. It's just, I think Milan, especially, is just smaller, you know, and people have a different lifestyle. They're busier, they have less time. I, I, I don't know. What but, uh, how can it be possible if mm, this is a, a practical thing? How can it be possible if I go to, uh, as, you, as you did, um, to, this, um, to this venue and uh, they ask me about a song, but I have to play cover? But you said before that nobody played covers right there. Maybe in jam sessions, yeah. In jam sessions, you play covers. Uh, what, what I said, what I meant before, uh, there's very, 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 very less people that play covers. You can still find it, you know. It's mm -hmm. not, it doesn't happen. But in London, every day before COVID, obviously, every day of the week in like, I don't know, in Camden Town, probably like six venues, and consider the entire city. Every day of the week, you can walk into a bar and there is a show. Every day. And you don't have to pay a ticket. And if you do, it's like three pounds maybe, you know? And maybe it's blues, maybe it's jazz, maybe it's hardcore punk, maybe it's whatever, you know? So mm -hmm. if you consider the amount of original bands that play are definitely much more than the cover bands. But even cover bands, I don't know, I don't know many nights. They do like, um, Revival, new metal, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and it's an event, and with either with the band or with DJs, but they are much less than than original bands. That's for sure. Okay, I, I'm for the original. <laughs> and like, uh, gym sessions are fun. There's uh, so many places you can go. There's like Blues Kitchen in Camden every Sunday. There's just blues, four hours of blues. After one hour, I have enough because everybody just. <laughs> You know, which is your favorite venue of London? Mm. <laughs> um, I think the Underworld is a good average. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> they, have, like, they have small bands and kind of big bands as well, like at the same time. Like, um, they vary a lot. They don't like it's not like playing at the O2 arena, they obviously yeah. like big bands, you know. In the underworld, you can find a small band, the local band, or a big band, like that. The maybe is doing a small show, you know. D did you play there? Yes, I did once. Just once. Yes, just once. Be uh, before before oh, COVID. Before COVID, yes. September <laughs> uh, before COVID. Yeah. But with your project, I mean. No, I played with my project. I played at the well, they closed it at the Unicorn. It's in Camden Road. Mm -hmm. they, good now i think and um, but with uh, a month before i played with lost outrider which is another project i work with it's a it's a synthwave band and we've been making songs together for like two years now three maybe and mm -hmm. um yeah we played in sheffield and we played in london too at the underworld uh, we were supporting someone else and it was pretty cool it was very really nice yeah. Yes. Yeah, I know. I know very well the, that place, and I was been tw the, the two times that I went there with the bands. Uh, I went also in the underworld. I said, "Why we can play here?" Because <laughs> uh, the long, the list is so long. Like the attending. The yeah. Long. And we said before that you have a uh, few collaborations, but uh, you have your own project. Yes. That starts before the COVID. Yes. It okay. Just, yeah. 
and uh, you are working on something where we can hear something about you, your music. Uh, yeah. You have any socials about that? Okay, so uh, on sound, I've been using a lot of SoundCloud because um, for my official release, that's going to be the first one at the end of May. Okay, like I don't have a date, specific date yet, but it's happening at the end of May. But what I've, I've been using SoundCloud to like spread my sound because my sound is very, very right, you know? So I just wanted to use SoundCloud to like give a hint and a suggestion of and like getting people used to what they're gonna hear basically you know not not an official release no not on uh, nothing on soundcloud i never released anything like official on soundcloud no okay okay that's why you use soundcloud and despite uh spotify so far yes okay yeah. okay that's why that's why i want to ask it because here in italy soundcloud uh, i mean it's not so um you, i mean it's useful for things that like your uh, like you did just yeah. uh, give an itch but here uh just spotify and i think somebody uh our a friend a friend of mine uses spotify uh quite a lot i mean every ideas every song that he made he just upload every week a song a new song every week and said how can you do that Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't want to judge because everybody, you know, they try things, but I see Spotify as like... It's a social network. It's, it's more than that. It's kind of like, okay, you don't print albums anymore. You know, like... Yeah, exactly. You can, you can sell. It, I mean, Spotify, it's like who you are. Like when you put stuff on Spotify, it's official. You understand? Yeah. And, and I think, I, I mean, there's artists that put, like you said, your friend uh, uploads stuff every week and yeah, that, that works, you know? Some people just want to have a bank, have a, um, have a bunch of stuff online to show what they do and that works for them, that's fine. But I personally, I'm before releasing a full album or EP on Spotify, I will be uploading just a bunch of singles and then do the final product. But it's really strange how music is consumed like nowadays, you know, but um, there is also one reason. The other reason for I've been using SoundCloud was to connect with other producers and musicians as well, because is it yeah. working? Yeah. I mean, you get like connections and requests and, uh, It's not easy to like find the right person, you know? I still think for, for me, I like to work um, remotely. I like if you build stuff together, but it's harder. If I produce my songs and I'm, I want to co-produce them with someone else, but without being in the studio at the same time, it can be a bit hard, you know? Like to explain. Yeah. It's not easy. So, I mean, it works. Um, if someone makes a track for me, You only have to write vocals and add stuff. Yes, I can do it. But if we have to build stuff together, it's not the same. Uh, I would rather to be in the studio with someone else, you know. Okay, okay. And, and was my next, uh, next question was, uh, um, how can you uh, write your songs? What, what inspire, inspire you? And uh, if you have somebody that makes some arrangement for uh for your songs or you do it yourself so i am lucky i live with a sound engineer <laughs> <laughs> okay that's and easy too 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 easy too easy i mean like i don't take advantage of advantage of it you know like uh, one of my husband is um is a sound engineer and the other one he's a drummer and he's really good at structuring songs so if i need help like i reach out But I always start just by myself, you know. But then for, for production, like for final production is, is different. I am, I rely on myself a lot though. I tend to want to do it all by myself, which is good and it's not at the same time, you know, because yeah, you, I know. To, you know, but sometimes you just want to put your ideas out and people are not in your head, you know, so it's hard to read, you know what I mean? 
Yeah, exactly, exactly. But but all, at the same time, when you have a producer, when you have a, a collabs, when you have somebody that looking out from from the outside, sometimes it, it gives you a different perspective yeah. of what is right and what is good and what is not. Yeah, 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 totally, totally. But that's why somebody, I mean, most of the people, I think all of the people need uh, um, an outside view like this. Uh, a producer, uh, a friend, uh, uh, a bandmate, mm, yeah, whatever. Yeah. But like, uh, there's another friend of mine, the one I used to play my sets uh, live. Mm. He's a sound engineer too, and he helped me uh, like with the tracks and stuff, and you know. So I just let's just say that I do like not the they do the bad work, you know. So like, make sure <laughs> the dirty work. <laughs> So hard, it takes so much time. I really wish I had the time to learn that. But then with creativity, it clashes, you know? Like, yeah. it's hard to, to do everything at the same time. But, um, but yeah, I, I collaborate with other people too. Like, even for my own stuff, um, I do like 60%, 70%. Let's say 65%. Mm. Uh, 65%. <laughs> I, I want to ask you something. Uh, in particular, because I, a friend of mine, he lives in uh, in London, and he sent me a picture of uh, a controversial commercial that are uh, right there in London in the subway, or I don't know if there there is also yeah. anywhere. And maybe you know what I mean. Um, this com this commercial is a, a very, uh, I think. Uh, uh, bad for um, for artists. For the picture that he sent me, there was an astronaut and uh, a, um, a sentence in the in the side of this uh, this astronaut. He said, "Max is an artist. This could be Max with his next job, and he don't know yet. This is very bad, I think." Because uh, th th this means something. What what happened right there? So this is back in. I have a. I didn't take the tube for a while now, so I don't know if there's still if the one you mentioned is a new one. But uh, in September, um, there used to be an ad, an advertisement with a with a ballerina, mm -hmm. in uh, whatever her name was. Um, you know, Hannah or something, she's a ballerina, but her next job might be in cyber. So basically the government, like this is the government because you could see the, the symbol of the government on the, on the chair. Thing. Yes, yes, I saw that. Uh, yeah, they were just trying to, you know, they didn't really help arts, the arts field in general. So what they were trying to do, because now you can't do everything you've done so far in your life, maybe you should make a career change and change your plans. And that was just awful. They were just telling everybody to like, oh, you can't sing, you can't dance anymore, you can't do this. Theaters are shutting down. Just get a real job. This was, you know, you know. Yeah. Like this, mean, this means that uh, the government won't help artists all around the uh, UK. No. Uh, the only help that venues, venues, for example, that's all I know about. Um, they got help through like um, foundations, like Music Trust Venue and other names. They got help, and they helped like venues and stuff. Uh, but some theaters had to shut down. You know, even theaters in the West End that have been open for <laughs> I don't know how many fucking years, and they just shut down. Um, the um, whoever is self-employed so artists any kind of artist or if you're an architect and you don't have a company you just work for freelancers and artists no help no. Uh, they were getting like probably like the minimum you know um so this they haven't been of any help uh in this country at all it's really it's really sad you you give recently your voice to a video game character is it right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And which, which what, what is the what is the game? Uh, the game is called Disco Elysium, and it's a RPG, a role play game. Mm -hmm. 
not a gamer. So I, I, I like I like some video games, but I'm not like into it that much. And there's so many characters in, in the video game, and I wouldn't be able to describe the whole plot story because it's really, you know, it takes hours to play, and you really need to be involved and focused. But um, yeah, I when I auditioned, they they look for someone with a Italian accent because the character it's like a um, AI character, <laughs> I think. Uh -huh. uh, but she's originally from Sicily. <laughs> Are you from Sicily? <laughs> um, I actually asked for help to my friends in Sicily when in the script I had some Italian words to say, like two in eight thousand words, two of them were in Italian. And All I was right. is this meant to be said in like the way I would say it or the way a Sicilian person would say it, you know? So I asked my friend Okay, with your dialect, with your accent, like how how are you do you spell <laughs> how you pronounce? It? But, but that didn't make any. I I am just like, it's. I think it's like it's not a main character. It's like um, uh, it's not the voice of a player of the player ca playing character, but it's one of the characters that the players encounters like as he goes, you know, through the plot. Mm -hmm. It's too complicated to explain. Do I we am. Which are the words? Uh, immediatamente. <laughs> but he said, we don't say immediatamente, we say subito. <laughs> Action. So, do you want me to say immediatamente or do you want me to say subito? Because this is what, if you want to stay true to the character, this is what I should say, you know? So somebody, some, somebody said, bad madre. <laughs> <laughs> Amor, amor. <laughs> <laughs> so, immediatamente. Mm. Immediatamente, and then there was another one. I don't remember. Um, uh, Joe, Poison Ivy, the game is called Disco Elysium. I, I, I'll, it's on my last post that I posted on Instagram. You'll you, you see it. You'll see it. And the second thing is that. Um, when they showed me the character, like, because yesterday I went to record some extra parts for like a, an extension of the game. Um, mm -hmm. So they showed me the picture of my character because I never seen it, you know, and they never saw me because the, the audition was just with the voice. And I noticed that the character, we have the same haircut. Like, oh, it, it, it looks like you. But yeah, but I was. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, uh, it's really strange. It's like. It's like not a coincidence, you know what I mean? It's are, like, are, you, are you sure that they didn't see nothing about uh, you? Because I auditioned in no November, but the game, everything uh, was probably developed like months and months and months and months before. So, um, and they didn't, I never sent any video or anything, just like a, a voice clip, you know, with my, with my voice. So. When the, the, the game came out, will it be released? Sorry. I think it got released like a few weeks ago, probably like a month ago. Yeah, like okay. just. But this is a second version of the game. So the original game was from 2019, and then they remake it. They remade it, and they added extra characters. So I'm one of the extra characters. Okay. Uh, can you name some of your most favorite songs? Mm, okay. Uh, I think. Okay, Breakthrough by Queen. It's the first one that I can think of. Um, probably. Um, I'm thinking about something by Mr. Bungle, but I don't. <laughs> I think Retro Vertigo by Mr. Bungle, probably. <laughs> um. Why Mr. Bungle and not, uh, for example, Fay No More? I have a Faith No More one too, actually. <laughs> 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 because I listen to, I've been listening to Mr. Bungle more than Faith No More lately. Uh, mm. I think that Just the Man by Faith No More is one of my favorite ones too, like a ballad. Um, mm -hmm. Or Kaku for Kaka as well. <laughs> <laughs> that one is like, pretty heavy. Yeah. And, and I really like uh, I Want You Back by Jackson 5. I have an obsession for that song. 
Like, <laughs> by Jackson 5, right? I love it. <laughs> Happy every time I hear it. Like, so, you, so you jump from Mike Patton to Jackson Five. <laughs> yes. Oh. And, uh, Flash without blood by Grimes. That's been another of my biggest obsession. Um, you know Grimes? No. Now she's Elon Musk's girlfriend. But oh, okay. Yeah, but before okay. this. Um, yeah, she's she's Canadian and she's really she. You you need to check her out. She's really okay. Cool. I will I will do it. I will do it. And what is the best movie of the world for you? <laughs> I think Mamma Mia. You know the musical. The musical <laughs> Mamma Mia. My favorite is Back to the Future. <laughs> About uh, I know that you are a very very big fan of Japanese culture. Oh yes. Yeah. Okay, and what do you like about that word? Mm. Okay, I'm not going to say everything. I'm going to be specific. I'm going to try hard. Okay, try to. Uh, mm. Well, mangas first. That'd be Absolutely. Reading and drawing since I was, I don't know, 12, I think. Um, so I you, you, you're, you're drawing in mangas? I used to. Now I just draw. I just draw characters, and I love oh, drawing. Okay. But I used to do like uh, strips when I was younger. Oh, nice! Nice. Sorry. Yeah, just for myself, you know. But, um, <laughs> but it was cool. Um, then fashion. I have a thing for like Harajuku style, and uh, you know that kind of mm, random clothes. Not not random. It's wrong. But like. Accostamenti, like putting clothes together that just look weird, but still that they make sense. I always like really like that. And, like, when I discovered Harajuku style, I thought, I'm not weird. It makes sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, well, the food and the fact that it's a very controversial country. So it's, it works well. But it has a very dark side, like really dark side, you know? Everything looks perfect and everybody is very disciplined, but why, you know? Behind the scenes in Japan, there's a lot of things that, you know, that kill people inside and not just inside, anyway. And I always found that some fascinating. It's dark. It's really dark. But, um, but I always find it really interesting, you know? Mm -hmm. Um. And then... Have you ever been in Japan? No, not yet. Not yet, but I'm going to. I'm going okay, to. okay. It's, it's uh, in the schedule. <laughs> there are two questions that a friend of mine sent to me right now. One is... Um, what, what is the thing that you... Um, uh, what are you missing the most about Italy? Ah, okay. The weather first. I miss. <laughs> I also miss. It. You know, Italian rain is different. Mm. It smells good in Italy when it rains. You know when it smells on the concrete, sul cemento, and in summer it's there's that smell. I miss that so much. You know, because when uh. it here it's like tiny and it rains and it doesn't and it's just strange and then the other thing that i miss is bars so the bar when you go you drink a coffee at the bar you have a quick chat with the bartender and then oh, you know mm -hmm. and or you stay there half an hour it's like um i don't know it's something that you don't get here even before covid if you want to go somewhere and get a coffee you can't drink it at the bar like nobody does that it's it's not a thing and mm. a bar normally they either do drinks or they don't do they don't do coffee they do one or the other mm. okay yeah so mm. i mean i found a place near my house where i go and it's like a emporio you know it's like a shop and it's a Portuguese shop, actually, which I'm really excited about because they have a very good coffee, like in Italy. <laughs> so um, I go there and I, you know, I drink it there sometimes. Sometimes I just drink it outside, and it makes me feel like I'm home. Uh, oh. But I really, I, 
And, and then the other thing that I really miss is having a car and, you know, you drive half an hour and you're on the other side of the region, you know? I think we are, we are at the end of this uh, live stream. It uh, was very, very funny. It yeah. uh, was a pleasure for me to meet you right there. I hope to, st to meet you in person, uh, maybe in London or maybe when you come back here. And um, there is something, just the, the, the last things, which is your most helpful advice to a musician who want to go to London following her, his passion, like you, you did? Uh, <clears throat> so, okay, consider that I, like I said before, you don't really, it doesn't really matter where you are to do your thing, right? So you can do, you can follow your dreams or whatever. You, you need to find a way. But if you need to get a break, to get away, and you come here, just remember who you are. And I mean, there's so many people in London, so many. And sometimes you feel like annullato, like you don't, nobody's going to see you, you know, because there's so much going on. Uh, don't let that happen. Like, remember who you are. And even if there's other, a hundred people that are doing what you're doing, it doesn't matter. Because you have to believe in it, you know? It sounds so cliche, but that's it. Uh, you, are, you are your, big, your biggest fan. You are your biggest fan and believe in what you're doing. Learn from everything that you see. Learn from everybody. Don't compare yourself. Do, but don't too much because <laughs> you compare yourself to learn like, oh, I'm doing this, this person is doing that. What can I learn? That's good. But don't, don't do it too much. And then, like I said, just... Mm, I think it's the only place where uh you know you should never feel like you're at the center of the world because it's not a good thing but kind of do like remember that you matter so much like you are your main uh priority here you know you have to believe in yourself yes we are at the end thank you so much anita Thank you're you. very kind <laughs> Th thank you guys for joining us this evening thank you so much Anita, thank you so much. Bye-bye, guys. Have a nice evening and see you tomorrow. Yes. Bye-bye. Buonanotte. Ciao. Ciao, buonanotte. Ciao, grazie. Ciao.